turning with me to exercise 13.3. It's on 619 in your book. That's where we're starting today. 13.3, the exercise on 619 says, during its first year of operations, our corporation had the following transactions pertaining to common stock. There are two of them there. I'm skipping them for the moment just to read the instructions. Journalize the transactions, assuming the common stock has a par of five per share. January 10th, issued 70,000 shares for cash at $5 per share. Would you like to hear the living translation of that entry? Yes or no? Yes. yes. Owner invested in the business. Who's going to do it for me? I need a volunteer. Let's get with it. I want to you up. Yes. Um, Make me an entry. Debit cash and uh, credit common stock. Debit cash and credit common stock is correct, Owen. Mm -hmm. How much? Um, $350,000. You determined how? Uh, I took $5 per share times 7,000 shares. I considered, when I prepared this visual, I considered typing in parentheses by each of these all day long today how you got it. And then I refrained on purpose because I was afraid that you would think that that was the standard that a journal entry ought to look like. And it's not. A journal entry ought to look like this. So you're this quasi learning to make journal entries and being a student. So I'm suggesting that you consider embellishing your notes if you're a note taker. Nobody told you to take notes. But if you're a note taker, why not write how you got it so that when you look back, on cold notes, you won't wonder. You'll have better notes. How'd you get it going? I want to play 70,000. 70,000 shares sold. They were sold for $5 per share. That's how you got this $350,000. How'd you get this $350,000? Well, the, I multiplied the $5 par. Ah, par. Oh, yes. Par. Par. In golf? No. And in accounting. Have in common that they're somewhat arbitrary. Now in golf, it's the length of the hole, the hazards, sand traps, trees, dog leg to the left. But somebody ultimately has to take all those criteria into account and say, this is a par three. Or this is a par five. Yes or no? And somebody, the incorporators, when asked by the state, uh, first of all, the incorporators are asking the state, please may we do business in your state as a corporation, and the state responds yes or no. But in that process, the state might ask, what par are you going to assign stock? And in this case, they chose $5. Does that mean that's what the stock's worth? No. No. Maybe, maybe not. It's just this arbitrary amount that's assigned to the stock. Logan, would you put your hand down for me? So, what comes from that is a couple of things that are significant in accounting. One of which is we always keep up with stock at par <coughs> if it has par. Are with me or not? You know that. I hope. Now, that equivalent entry last week or last semester would have read debit, cash, credit, John Doe Capital. Could you nod your head at me right this minute? It's the same thing. I don't want you to think about this as some new concept that you've never encountered before. It's the same thing. Logan, what's your question? Is it, is, when they're issuing stock, is it the par value, is that sort of like uh, initial public offering? Yeah. And that's what it is? Yeah, pretty much. So, Owen, let's talk. What kind of an account is common stock? Asset, liability, capital, revenue, or expense? Uh, capital. 
It is. What's the new name for Catholic? Um, Stockholder's Equity. Good. How many parts to Stockholder's Equity are there? There's two. Two is correct. What are their names? Um, paid in and um, the earnings. The, um, paid in and, oh, what's his name? <laughs> <laughs> paid in and retained earnings. Yes. Is this a group project? Yes. No. <laughs> <laughs> Paid in and retained earnings. retained earnings. So which is this? this paid in or retained? Paid in. Because? Because we're receiving cash from our stockholders. It came from others. Yes, it came from It's a correct answer. You said it. Did y'all hear what Owen said? Could you have said that had I called on you? No. There's absolutely no reason you shouldn't have been able to say that. Those were words directly out of Monday's lecture. And Owen's the first person that was able to do it that fluently in the third class I've taught this semester. It would have been okay for the first person to have struggled just a bit more. It's not okay for the last person in the room not to be able to do that by the time you walk out of the room today. Repetition's a great teacher. And you're going to roll your eyes and make it, uh, again, are we going to do this uh, again before the day's over? Say it to yourself. Listen every time. It changes just a little bit, but it's the essential thing we're trying to communicate. You know, we don't do many financial statements in class. That's kind of funny when you think about that being the ultimate output of what we're trying to learn. But through this series of questions, I'm trying to get you to mentally place these accounts, these new accounts, on the balance sheet in the stockholders' equity section. I'm hoping that your preparation of homework for next time will have more meaning than it did this time. <laughs> I'm hoping that it's not just get her done, get the points, but make some sense out of it. Let's talk about this two sections paid in or retained stuff. This is really next week's lesson. I'll probably share it with you in class. Oops, next Monday, but rats, we won't be together. Maybe let's go over here a minute. So class, do you remember that first semester, first chapter, we discovered that there were four reasons that capital would ever change? Yes or no? Yes. You all have said them to me on many occasions. Can you name them again? They're the same as they were in chapter one. In my opinion, there seem to be only four reasons that capital would ever change. Let's name them as a group. What's this one? Investment. Come on, speak up. Investments. Investments by the owner. What's this one? Withdrawals, Withdrawals by the owner. What's this one? Revenue. Revenue. What's this one? Expenses. They don't have to be in a certain order, but <coughs> it's nice to have a little order to them, don't you think? Now, here's the connection between <coughs> proprietorships and corporations. It's the same thing with different vocabulary. So, Owen says common stock is paid in or retained, Owen? Um, paid in. Because? Because the stock grows for the cash. It came from owners. And you were right. What you said was right. I just said it differently. So on this list, that's this one. What did I say the very first thing today? The theme for today is owners investing in the business. When owners invest in the business for corporations, it becomes paid in capital. If you're with me right this minute, say yes. yes. Now, in Monday's lecture, you heard me say there's two chapters on corporations. One about paid in this week. One about retained next week. All these other events wind up being retained earnings. And that's pretty much all I'm going to say about it today. Because we've got next week to cover that. But I wanted you to know this distinction to perhaps satisfy a curiosity as we begin this, this week's emphasis is just changing the vocabulary to be consistent with corporations. We want to know about paid-in transactions. And here's one. Debit cash and credit common stock. If you're with me right this minute, say yes. 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 On July 1st, we issued 40,000 shares for cash at $7 a share. Braxton, is that a volunteer hand? 
Yes, sir. Good for you, Braxton. Let's hear it. Um, debit cash for 280000 and then um, you would credit common stock for 200000 and then you would credit PIC common stock for 80000 I'll, I'll say that's acceptable in a while. The first time you need to tell me what it means. I kind of forgot. Well, that would be the problem with abbreviating, wouldn't it? Yes, sir. <laughs> Think a minute, Braxton. Um, what does it stand for? Probably paid in... There you go. Cash. Capital. Capital. Paid in capital. Okay. Calm. In excess of... Par, this stock has par. Okay, I remember that now. And if there are two classes of stock, you'd have to say common stock or preferred stock. Real weird account title, wouldn't you agree, Braxton? Yes, sir. Paid in capital in excess of par, which is just a reminder of us to us that we always keep up with stock at par. <coughs> How much, Braxton? For eighty thousand. Eighty thousand. Talk to me, Braxton. What goes in parenthesis by this two eighty? Um. Let's see. It would just be like 40,000 shares. 40,000 shares times, times $7. $7 a share, the sales price. Mm -hmm. 40,000 times 7 is 280,000. That's how much cash came in. Good. How about this one, Braxton? Well, since it's uh, stock, you have to go by par value. You always keep up with stock at par if it has par, right, Braxton? Yes, sir. And that was $5. So it would just be. Um, 40,000 shares times 5. 40,000 times 5 is 200,000, but I thought debits and credits had to equal. They do. They don't. They will. They will when you... How'd you get this number, Braxton? Um, the difference. Plugged it? Yes. Uh, last week we plugged something for a partnership's investment, a partner's investment in a partnership. And we talked about good plugs and bad plugs. And last week when we did that, it was the only way to do it. We couldn't do it another way. I think you can get this number another way. I don't think you should plug something if you can get it another way. So Braxton, what was the sales price per share? Um, seven dollars. What was par per share? Five dollars. So seven minus five is a two dollar excess. A two dollar excess for how many shares? Forty thousand. Forty thousand times two is this eighty thousand dollars. The advantage to plugging it is you know it would balance. The disadvantage to this is that you'd have to glance one more time and make sure you were in balance. You wouldn't want to make a compound entry like this that you weren't in balance. Right, Braxton? Yes, Braxton, we're talking about new account titles today, and you introdu introduced us to paid in capital and excess of par. What kind of an account is it? Asset liability, capital, revenue, expense. Mm. Capital. It's capital. What's the new name for capital? Um, stockholders' equity. Or shareholders' equity. Shareholders. I say stockholders' equity. But I want you to know that shareholders' equity is an equi equivalent term. Synonym, exactly the same, not one better than the other, equal. Okay? Stockholders' equity. How many parts of stockholders' equity are there? Two. What are their names? Um, paid in and retained earning. Good. Real good. Which is this? This would be a retained earning. Because? Because it's not, because it's not an investment. Well, is it? What's happening in this transaction? Are we selling merchandise to customers? Are we purchasing? Are we selling merchandise to customers, class? No. We're selling stock. Are we selling merchandise to customers? If we sell merchandise to customers, what do you think this is? It looks like revenue or gross profit. Yes? What is this? Is this revenue? Is the question on the table right this minute. Is this revenue? Is this revenue? Yes or no? When you engage in transactions with customers, your desire is to earn revenue. With whom are we engaging in a transaction, Braxton? Um, customers. No. Stockholders. Stockholders. Simply put, owners. 
The theme for today is owners investing in the business. Braxton, is this revenue? No. What is it? Um, Asset liability, capital revenue expense. You answered that correct question correctly already. Are you in? Mm -hmm. What is it? I forgot. Here I'm trying to teach lifetime <laughs> skills, and you can't remember it for 30 seconds? <laughs> yeah. Ooh, excellent. Can I get a lifeline? No. <laughs> I'm going to make you squirm just a little bit longer. Braxton, what is paid in capital in excess of par? Asset, liability, capital, revenue, or expense? When did I already say it? <laughs> we'll replay the tape if you want to. I heard it. Did y'all hear him say it correctly? Yes. Ooh. David, what is it? Capital. It's capital. Yeah. It's in what, the, what, what's the, the account. Will the witness just please answer the question? <laughs> <laughs> what's the new name for capital, Braxton? Um, stockholders or shareholders equity. Ooh, let's just say one or the other. That was a very thorough answer. Just say one or the other. Uh, it's okay, I got it. How many parts are there? Two. What are their names? Paid in and retained. Which is this? Um, paid in. It is. It's in the title. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I wasn't quite ready to reveal that little secret, but I'm glad you saw it. <laughs> so, Braxton, listen to me. Braxton, Braxton, listen to me. There are two questions that I ask about now. One of them is, because? And the other is, how did you know? Now, the question I asked Owen about common stock was, because, and he said, what kind of an account is this? Oh, uh, capital. New name for capital? Uh, stockholders. How many parts are there? Uh, two. What are their paid names? In and Which is this? That is uh, paid in because it came from the owners. Thank you. <laughs> Braxton, what kind of an account is paid in capital in excess of par? Uh, capital. Paid in or retained? It's paid in. Because? Because. It's in the name. Because, Owen? Because it came from the The owner. theme for today is owners investing in the business. And all we're going to talk about this week is paid in transactions. When owners invest in the business, capital goes up. We call that stockholders' equity. There are two parts, paid in and retained. We've got to know which we're talking about. We're talking about paid in. Because? Come on, say it. It came from, it came from owners. Now, Braxton, we're going to do this one more time. What kind of an account is paid in capital in excess of par? Paid in or retained? It's paid in. How'd you know? Because it came from the owner. Ah, that's the other answer. Um, it's in the name. This one is, how'd you know? <laughs> Say it again, you just said it. It's in the name. Because it says so in its name. My mother said to my dad on more than one occasion, Morris, you'd argue with the signpost. He was a very stubborn man. Don't argue with something as apparent <coughs> as the nose on your face. This one ought to be the easiest one. Paid capital, inaccessible. Is this revenue class? No. no. Because it came from owners, not customers. Owners. Are you better off right this minute than you were when you arrived today? Yeah. Yes. Now, I said all these things in Monday's lecture, but you just breeze right on through that homework problem, not making an association with the homework and the lecture. And we need to think about it just a little bit more than that. The B part of this says, journalize the transactions assuming the common stock is no par with the stated value of a dollar. January 10th, issued 70,000 shares for cash at $5 a share. Matthew. Okay, you got a debit cash for 350000 <coughs> And you're going to credit <coughs> um, common stock for... 70,000? 
and you're going to deb uh, credit paid in capital in excess of stated value for $280,000. You should have had that entry before you saw it on the screen just now. You'll learn more in accounting if you get just a step ahead. When you're passive and you just wait for somebody else to do it, you don't learn as much. You know where I'm going in the exercise. Stay with me, listen to the dialogue, participate, answer all the questions, but stay a little bit ahead so that you're always checking your work and not just copying correct answers off the screen. Matthew, how did you get 350000 uh, That was the um, price we uh, sold the 70000 Say numbers. What goes in parenthesis? 70000 Seventy thousand shares sold at five dollars a share comes out to be three hundred fifty thousand. How did you get seventy thousand beside common stock? Stated value of one dollar times seventy thousand. We always keep up with stock at par if it has par, and if it doesn't have par, it might have stated value. If it does, we keep up with it at stated value. <coughs> seventy thousand times one, right, Matthew? And how did you get 280000 Matthew? It was the difference between the selling price and the stated value. Did you do that on a per unit basis, or did you just plug this in for Per unit. So $7, the sales price, minus $1, the stated value, is $6. Am I right? No, we're doing Sales price was $5. What's the sales price? I forgot. Five dollars. Sales price was $5, <coughs> minus the $1 stated value is in excess of... $4. $4. How many shares were sold? 70,000. 70,000 shares sold with an excess of $4 per share comes about comes out to be $280,000 and the entry balances. Yes, Matthew? Yes, it does. Matthew, what kind of an account is common stock? Capital. What kind of an account is paid in capital in excess of stated value? Capital. What's the new name for capital? Shareholders equity. How many parts are there? Two. What are their names? Paid in and retained. Which is paid in capital and excessive stated value? Paid in or retained? Paid in. If you prepared a balance sheet today, would it go on, and an income statement, would it go on the balance sheet or the income statement? Income statement. Oh, sorry. Ooh, I'm glad I asked that question. I didn't ask that question yesterday balance sheet. in the previous two sections. Does this go on the balance sheet or the income statement, Matthew? Balance sheet. In which section of the balance sheet? Asset, liability, or capital? That was the question I've been asking. That's the question. What is this but capital? What's the new name for capital? Matthew? Shareholders equity. How many parts are there? Two. So there are, is a paid in section and a retained section. In which section does this go? Paid in. When you do your stockholders equity section, all these questions ought to come back to you. We're placing these on the balance sheet ultimately through this series of questions. How'd you know that it was paid in? It says so. It says so. On July 1st, we sold 40,000 shares for cash at 7. I need a brand new volunteer. Brooke, make me an entry. You debit cash for $280,000, credit common stock for $40,000, and credit paid in capital in excess of state of value for $240,000. How'd you get $280,000? Um, I did the 40,000 shares times $7. <clears throat> 40,000 shares sold at $7 a share comes out to be $280,000. I guess that's where I got the seven. I was trying to fiddle around with that one. Brooke, how'd you get the 40? Um, stated value is $1 per share and 40,000 shares. Brooke, how'd you get the 240? I did the difference between the $7 and $1, which is $6 per share, comes 40,000 shares. Way to go, Brooke. Who's with Brooke and me right this minute? Put your hand up. Way to go. Brooke, I'm going to give you a choice. There's no new account here. You and I are going to have a dialogue about one of these accounts. Which would you like it to be? Mm, paid in capital. Paid in capital and excessive stated value is an asset liability, capital, revenue, or expense. Capital. New name for capital? Shareholders equity. <coughs> How many parts are there? Two. <coughs> what are their names? Paid in and retained. Which is this? Paid in. Because? The owners. It came from owners. Is correct. If you've got a question right this minute, you ought to ask me. Logan? Uh, what's the difference between par and stated value? Like why, why would they, what's the benefit of doing two completely? 
One has 11 letters and one has three. <laughs> 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 uh, and, and other than that, they're pretty much the same. Okay. One of them causes you to name an account par, and one of them causes you to name an account stated value in that account. That's the only reason. I'm not, I'm, you know, always, never, only, <laughs> that, those kinds of things are pretty hard to do. But in simple terms, that's okay. pretty much it. Right. Is that patronizing you or? Yeah. It's, huh? I just no, somebody had to ask it. There's I several people in this room that are curious about that. Yeah. Just it's a little ridiculous. You want to hear the longer version again? Okay. We had par. This is a pendulum. And it was abused. Is that too hard for you to imagine? Some shyster trying to take advantage of some little little lady? Yeah. Uh -uh. You know that kind of guy? Did that mean anything to you? Is that too old? <laughs> David and I got it. Huh? Too old? Yeah, too old. Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> so, because of the abuse, we did away with par completely. No par. And then the movers and shakers and decision makers sat around in some smoke-filled room smoking their cigars saying, I kind of miss part, don't you? Yeah, I miss part too. Hey, let's come up with something to torture principals of accounting students and have something similar to par. Let's name it stated value. I don't know. Google it. <laughs> See what they have to say. What does the book say? about the difference between par and stated value. You ought, you ought to be curious about it. Try to find it. I read it and it really didn't <laughs> clarify that. Well, I, I tried. That's the reason I tried to be somewhat ridiculous about it. Just try to get it. Okay, let's do 3-5. 13-5 is. 13-5, the exercise says, our company has the following transactions during the current period. Issued 5,000 shares of $5 par common to attorneys in payment for a bill for $30,000 for services provided in helping the company to incorporate. I'm looking for a brand new volunteer. Courtney, make me an entry. Um, you have a debit organization experience for the $30,000, and then you get a um, credit common stock for $25,000. I thought debit credit had equal. They do. They don't. They will. When? You debit. Paid in capital with access of par. Debit it or credit it? You credit it. You got, I got a tax score. Credit, credit, it. credit it. For how much? $5,000. How'd you get to $5,000? I plugged it. Plugged it. Is this a good plug or a bad plug? That's a bad plug. I, oh, no. Oh, well, it's a good plug. I think it's the only way you could do it. Right. Organization expense. Hmm. What kind of an account's that? Asset liability, capital revenue expense. Expense. How'd you know? Title. Says so in its name. We've been. This isn't the first time we've got one of those said so in its name things, right? Yeah. Goes on the balance sheet or income statement. Income statement. In which section? Expense. Good. Real good. What kind of an account is paid in capital in excess of par? Capital. New name for capital? Stockholders. Equity. How many parts are there? Two. What are their names? Two. Is it okay to say them in that order? Yes. Yeah. It's the same answer. Is there an order I prefer you say them in? <laughs> yeah. Why? Why do I prefer you to say them paid in and retained instead of retained and paid in? The sum's the same. That's what, the way it comes in on the balance sheet. Thank you. That's precisely what I want to say. Paid in comes before retained on the balance sheet, so let's just be accustomed to that and know that. Court, which is paid in capital excess of par? Paid in or retained? Amen. Because? Y'all want to hear a, an imaginary story that might have been this one? Ever heard of Bill Gates? Can you imagine Bill Gates kind of fresh out of college, living in some little small two-bedroom house with a single car garage in which he's building computers? Now, he remembers his college roommate who went to law school. And Bill Gates is thinking about incorporating. He realizes he needs some legal help to incorporate his business. 
So instead of looking in the yellow pages for some unknown attorney with whom he's not familiar, he remembers, oh, how about getting my college roommate to do it? So he calls the guy on the phone and says, I don't have any money to pay you right now, but if you'll help me with all these papers to get me incorporated, I'll give you some stock in it. I really think this is going to be a good thing. <laughs> I've even been thinking about what I'm going to name it. Mm. Microsoft. Y'all with me or not? <laughs> and his former roommate, now law school grad, a practicing attorney, says, okay, I guess. Fills out all the paperwork, gets some shares of stock. Bill Gates makes this entry. Is this real life or what? Could that have happened? I don't know whether it happened or not. Could it have happened? Say yes or no. Mm -hmm. 612. Issued 60,000 shares of $5 per common for cash at 375. Who's doing this entry for me? Tell me, Jason. Uh, you would debit cash for $375,000 and you would credit common stock for $300,000 and credit paid in capital in excess of R um, for $75,000. Good. Real good. I don't think they told us details about this. If we really wanted to know, we could figure it out per share. I'm not interested. That was given. Agree? Mm -hmm. How'd you get this one? Um, I multiplied 60000 by $5 part. Because we always keep up with stock at? Park. 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 If it has part. So tell me again what goes in parentheses. Um, 60000 60000 shares sold at? $5 per share. At par of $5 Five per share. Part, they weren't yes. sold for that. That was my mistake for asking one. At which we were keeping up with at $5 per share. And you got this number by? Plugging it. That's the only way you could get it this time. Because we don't know this per share information. You had to plug this. So, Jason, which one of these two accounts would you like to describe for me? Let's go pay in. This one yeah. is an asset liability, capital, revenue, expense. Capital. New name for capital? Stock loads equity. How many parts are there? Two. What are their names? Pay in, capital, and retainer. Which is this? Pay in, capital. How'd you know? Because it says it in the name. Way to go. Are y'all with me or not? Mm -hmm. uh -huh. <coughs> On July the 11th, we issued a thousand shares at a hundred dollar <coughs> par, preferred for cash at 110 a share. How about making me this entry, brand new volunteer Nate? <coughs> um, debit cash, a hundred and ten thousand. And then credited preferred stock a hundred thousand. Paid in capital in excess of par preferred stock two thousand dollars credit. How'd you get a hundred and ten? Um, I multiplied a hundred shares by a hundred and ten dollars per share. Hundred shares. A thousand shares. Sorry, thousand shares times a hundred and ten the sales price is this number. Mm -hmm. How'd you get this number? A uh, thousand shares multiplied by a hundred dollars par value for preferred stock. Because, because that was par. We always there it came finally. Who did that? Nobody heard that. Oh. I was going to tell you two stories, and I was waiting to see if somebody would do it. I usually don't tell the story until next time. <laughs> On one occasion, I had a student in a class who every time I <laughs> Did y'all get that? Who did it? That was me that time. Courtney, you're looking so innocent. <laughs> I wouldn't have picked you out of the crowd that time. <laughs> Your timing was impeccable. <laughs> then I had a student who every time I struck the ball, it was one of you two. <laughs> Ducked. <laughs> <laughs> Who's talking to me? I forgot. Who am I talking to? Nate? Did we classify one of these, Nate? No. 
You know, both of these are new. Let's do this one. All right. What kind of an account is preferred stock? It's capital. New name for capital? Stock quarters. Like How many parts are there? Two. What are their names? Paid in capital and retained. Which is this? I think it's paid in capital. It is. It is. Because? Because it's uh, from it's paid by the owner. That's correct. So you're preparing financial statements. Does this go on the balance sheet or the income statement? The balance sheet. In which section? Capital. And that's all. The reason for that is all those questions you just answered. All those questions should be mentally placing it on the balance sheet. On November 28th, purchase 2,000 shares of Treasury <coughs> stock for $80,000. I need a volunteer handout. Who's doing this for me? Jordan, is it you? Yes. Here we go. I would um, debit treasury stock $80,000 and credit cash $80,000. Debit treasury stock and credit cash. How much, Jordan? $80,000. How did you get $80,000? It's in the problem. Just given? Yes. Well, if is this common or preferred? I'm assuming it's common. It's a, it's a good assumption. More likely common than preferred. Very often common, very commonly common, n very rare that it's preferred. So the par of the common is $5 a share. Did we keep up with this at par? Um, no, we did not. Give me a word to describe that 80,000. Four letters. see some lifelines in there. Shall we ask Logan? Sure. Cost. Cost. We always keep up with treasury stock at cost. So what kind of an account is treasury stock? We ought to be curious about that. I think you are much more fluent about common stock, preferred stock, and the paid-in accounts than you were when you walked in the room today. But here's a new, unusual account. Jordan? It's what? Con contra stockholders equity account. Ooh. <coughs> Contra. So capital has a normal debit balance or credit balance, Jordan? Capital has a credit balance. And treasury stock appears to have a debit balance. And Contra would be the explanation for that. So we could say Contra capital. Yes. But you more accurately described it as Contra stockholders equity. That's a better answer. Well, let's go one more step. Contra paid in or contra retained? <coughs> contra paid in because it doesn't affect the value of the stock. Contra paid in or contra retained, Logan? Contra paid in or contra retained, Owen? Contra get, get, get your answer on your tongue, okay? <laughs> I'm going to ask you. Get ready. Contra paid in or contra retained? Contra paid in. Yeah, Mr. James. <laughs> contra paid in or contra retained, Sam? Contra retained. Sam? Uh, David? Contra paid in. Matthew? Contra paid in. Brooke? Paid in. Contra paid in or contra retained, Sam? Contra paid in. Nate? Contra paid in. Courtney? Contra paid in. Let's vote. Contra paid in? <laughs> contra retained. There was almost no need to have a vote. Whew. Well, let's see if we can find this answer in the book. Turn with me. I'm going to have to find it here. Wrong switch. That on, that on, that on. Let's just look back a page or two. You got a book with you today? If you don't, maybe your neighbor does. If you don't, I'm about to project mine. How about this illustration on 614? I see what I need to see there. That would work. I could also use the illustration on 612. Let's go to 612. If you don't have a book, can you see what I'm projecting? Yes or no? Yes or no? So tell me, how much treasury stock is there in this stockholder's equity section of the balance sheet. Say the number. Treasury stock? 
The treasury stock is not 140,000. I haven't heard the right number yet. 80,000? It is 80,000. The treasury stock is that figure right there. Do you see it or not? Yes or no? Yes. I'm playing 612. I did say 614, and then I said 612, and then I said I'm going to go with 612. Y'all with me or not? Yes. Okay, here's the question. If it is, the total paid in is this figure right there. No? Yeah. There it is. Was treasury stock subtracted from total paid in, the 3630000 was treasury stock subtracted from that literally? Yes or no? no. Speak up. No. no. It's not total. It's not contrapayment. Was this treasury stock of eighty subtracted from retained earnings the one million fifty-eight thousand? Yes or no? Yes. No. These two sum. Total stockholders equity. Has Treasury stock subtracted from that? Yes. Yes. It is not contra paid in. It is not contra retained. That's a trick question. Yeah. I confess. It's contra stockholders equity. Now, it's the first of the contra accounts that's not contra to something specific. All the others, you can say contra the whole thing and contra a specific thing. Allowance for doubtful accounts is contra asset and contra receivables. Sales returns and allowances is contra revenue and contra sales. A category and something specific. Treasury stock is contra to the whole thing. Treasury stock is contra stockholders equity. Jordan, are you with me right this minute? Yes, sir. Oh, and your hands up. Um, the from treasury stock up top is 140000 Is that how much they paid us for the treasury stock? I'm getting to that in a second. Okay. okay. That's a really good question that deserves an answer. Let's see if we can go one step further here. Is there another entry? Are we going to sell some of this? This is thirteen five. we're doing. Oh, rats. We just purchased some. Oh, and I think we're going to have to put your question on hold to next time. What a good transition between now and next time. What was the theme for today? Owner investing in the business. The theme for next time is treasury stock. Let's talk about the definition for treasury stock real quickly. Do you remember the characteristics of treasury stock? Could you recount them for me? It'll be a group project. Collectively among you. Can we talk about the nature of this account? Jordan says it's contra stockholders equity. How did it become treasury stock? What are its characteristics? Come on, help me out. Whose stock is it? The company's. It's got our name on it. Where, did, where was it when I went out to buy it? It was in the hands of the stockholders. How did it get there? I sold it to them. That's what we've been doing all day today. Any of those transactions we recorded today would have caused me to put shares in their hands. They became owners. Then what happened? You said it. Said it out loud. Reacquired. I got it back. There's several ways you can get it back, but the most common is you bought it back. You bought it back. And when you got it back, what'd you do with it? Did you shred it? Why didn't you shred it? Because you only have a certain number of shares. You're only authorized to issue a certain number of shares. And these are precious. These can be reissued. Why waste them like that? Don't shred it. Put it in a stack in the safe, but differentiate it between those that have never been issued, that are just office supplies, and those that have. Maybe you had another purchase of treasury stock sometime. Stock of your company that you issued, somehow got it back, and you didn't cancel it, and you haven't reissued it. You're still holding it. Treasury stock. Did you have any treasury stock transactions in today's homework? I feel like you will for next time. And we'll talk about it in class. Have a great day.